Now, today's earthquake in Alaska has a lot of San Diegans thinking about our risk of a big earthquake in San Diego. And joining us now to talk about that is geologist Dr. Pat Abbott. Thanks so much for being here. here. Pat, you've talked about the, the ring of fire before, which includes Alaska. So what do we know about Alaska's earthquake activity? Well, Alaska is far and away the most earthquake active state of the 50 states. Mm. We basically have Pacific Ocean floor that's traveled hundreds of miles, gets pulled tens of miles thick, pulled under the state of Alaska. The second biggest earthquake we have ever measured, that's 115 years worth, is a 9.2 in Alaska in 1964. That's way bigger than what we saw in Japan with that 9.0 yes. back in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you saw the news coming out of Alaska today, what were you thinking? I mean, is this something that I guess anybody sort of predicted or expected? Well, Alaskans should expect earthquakes more than anybody else, frankly. Uh, and and, and what, what I was kind of hoping, it may sound a little silly to you, but mm -hmm. having gone through a 9.2 and you rewrite the building codes, mm -hmm. a 7.0 magnitude earthquake is significant. I'm not yeah. belittling it at all, but yeah. if you were preparing for a 9, I'm hoping that all the major buildings survive without any real problem because they should have been built to a code mm -hmm. strong enough to handle this. So what if that were to happen in a place like San Diego with that magnitude, what are we talking about here? Well, I'm afraid we'd see a, a, an awful lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say damage now, I don't mean widespread like you saw in Japan, mm -hmm. but, but our scenario earthquake for the Rose Canyon Fault now, the biggest that we reasonably expect is a 6.9. That would be the same as the Loma Prieta earthquake back in 1989 mm -hmm. up in the San Francisco Bay Area. There wasn't widespread destruction, but there were signature events that were kind of stomach wrenching, like the collapse of the Interstate 80 mm -hmm. elevated roadway mm -hmm. and you know individual things like that. I hope it doesn't say, happen in San Diego, mm -hmm. but if we had that earthquake, we might see a couple of major failures like that, but not widespread major destruction. Uh, I think, you know, when you mentioned Japan, people think about tsunamis and what happened over there and in the Pacific um, years before. I, I guess if we saw an earthquake like that here, what would have to happen for any kind of tsunami to hit us? Would that have to happen off the coast or could those be triggered by something happening within well, the land? Well, two big factors let's talk about with tsunami. First off, uh, magnitude. When I heard this was a 7.0, my mind goes, no tsunami threat. Okay. I, I basically use a rule of thumb of magnitude 7.5 and up. And the second thing I always look for, which I did here instantly, was, was the fault movement under land or on the ocean floor. Mm -hmm. If it's on land, seismic waves traveling to the ocean aren't going to disturb it. What really charges the water with tsunami level mm -hmm. energy is when the ocean floor itself either moves up or drops down. Mm -hmm. Then that energy is pumped in the water. That's where it's really dangerous. So this was 7.0, small for the tsunami world, yeah. and it was under land, 25 miles deep. It didn't directly hit the ocean. Okay. All right, all right, Pat Abbott, thank you for the insight. Okay. As always.